Hey everyone, welcome to the second video of the LibGDX GDX AI tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue where we left off, uh, having just created our first Box2D steering entity class that implements the steerable interface. And as I've mentioned in the previous video, the steerable interface is good for helping you really uh, dig deep into the GDX AI library. Uh, it is a necessity. So the GDX AI library knows how to move your character around. And that's what the steerable interface is for. So it knows how fast the entity is allowed to move. And uh, the position of the entity, like what kind of location that the entity operates in, be it one space, two space, or 3D space. And it also allows you to uh, apply the behavior uh, steering calculations to your entity or whatever you're using, be it Box2D or uh, Scene2D of the sorts. So that's essentially what the steerable interface is for, is just getting everything going for you. All you have to do is provide it the restrictions that you want, and uh, GDX AI kind of takes care of the rest for you. So uh, we're just going to kind of continue from where we left off last time. And if you'll notice, there's a few variables that I just set to some default values here. You can have these in the, const uh, the constructor of the object if you want. I just chose to put these in here as 500, 5,000, 30, and 5, as you can see. And tag to set to false. And uh, the steering output, or well, I changed this to steer output to better reflect the GDX AI uh, repo in their tests uh, that's on GitHub. And they have a lot of good stuff there. It's kind of where I just dug around and messed, messed with a few of their test cases and whatnot with Box2D and Scene2D uh, just to see how things worked and why things were doing what they were doing. So if you want any of this code that I'm about to show you today, it's for the most part going to be one-to-one -to, -one to that. Um, with maybe a few minor modifications here or there. So uh, to just kind of jump right back into it, we're going to approach our update method now. And if you remember, we created these uh, two methods, set behavior and get behavior. Now, in order for the steering entity to operate uh, with an artificial intelligence uh, type of behavior, we need to set it. And then once it has one, we update the steering entity every frame, and uh, our behavior will calculate how fast the entity is supposed to move and how uh, or the angle it's supposed to go in based off of what we give it here with get position, get orientation, linear velocity, and whatnot. And from there, uh, in the apply steerings or in the apply steering method, we apply what it calculated. And then we make sure to cap the linear speed and angular speed based on our uh, max limits here for the linear speed, acceleration, angular speed, and acceleration. So that's kind of the approach that we're going for today. And again, a lot of this is going to be on the GDX AI test repo. So if you really want the code to just copy and paste, you can go there and it should look very similar to what we have here. I just hope to explain this for you guys so you know what's actually going on. Um, so what we're going to be doing first is in the update method, we want to make sure that there is even a behavior uh, to work with to begin with. So make sure that the behavior is not null, which means we have set a behavior. And remember, you can set a behavior on the fly. You can change it any time uh, to set the, a different target or anything. Uh, that's what makes this very flexible. Um, as an AI system, you can program some state machines to change behavior uh, depending on certain situations and whatnot. And it's really great and easy to work with, and it's very modular. So as, again, uh, we have the behavior dot calculate steering. Now, this is what that steer output is going to be for. As you remember, we have the steering acceleration up here. And this is pretty much uh, going to take whatever the calculate steering method creates by gathering all these uh, all this information for us and what it's going to do is tell our box 2d body where it's supposed to go uh, how fast it's supposed to go and whatnot and that's where we hand off to the apply steering and uh, apply that 
steering output along with limiting the speeds of both angular and linear speeds. So uh, once we have that, we, like I said, go to apply steering and pass that delta value. So um, we can now move into the apply steering method. And this one's going to be a little vector math heavy, um, but it, for the most part, is pretty straightforward. Uh, if uh, the first thing you want to do is just get this Boolean value um, called any accelerations, and we're just going to set that to false. So we're going to use that to determine if there was any angular or linear accelerations applied from the steering output. And if there were, then we can catch that and make sure to cap the linear speed and uh, linear acceler or, I'm sorry, uh, angular speed as well. So uh, first thing we want to do is check if there even is any steering output to apply. And uh, you just get that, make sure it's not zero with the exclamation point here, of course. And vector two, that means we found that there is steering output to apply equals steer output dot linear dot scale. We want to scale this by the delta. The reason we passed in this delta value is to make sure our speeds are complying with our frames per second. That way everything looks smooth uh, even when there's lag. So uh, it'll kind of compensate here or there for that reason. So then uh, we have our force that we want. And so we just do body, apply, force to center. And that's just going to give it that vector 2. And it does wake the body uh, because we are moving. And because there were accelerations found, because the zero output was not 0, then uh, we set any accelerations to true. And so we know that there was uh, something changed in the acceleration aspect of the body and so we want to make sure that it's not breaking its limits that we set up here. So we can do that by doing if any accelerations and uh, to cap the linear speed uh, as seen in the uh, repo you can see that they use something called len2 and they also do some like squared type of uh, math and it's I'll explain that here once I get it typed out real quick. So velocity uh, equals body dot get linear velocity and then we want this float current speed square equals velocity dot len two. And so what this does is it makes sure that our linear speed in both uh, like it doesn't even matter if we're going um, like full in the x direction or full in the y direction um, it'll just kinda compensate for both directions on the x and y axis of the vector and give us that uh, single magnitude value that uh, of our current linear speed and so um, to check that we just have if current speed square is greater than max linear speed times max linear speed then uh, the body dot set linear velocity and we're gonna take the velocity and scale it by max linear speed divided by the square root of the current speed square. And what that's going to do is uh, pretty much divide by, um, it, it's going to set the current speed to the max linear speed. Uh, that's basically what this math is applying is, as you see, we have max linear speed times max linear speed, and that's max linear speed square. And current speed square is actually um, the body's current velocity, um, like the, just the magnitude of its velocity. And so we're just dividing it by that to kind of give it a uh, ratio uh, from what it was and it'll scale it properly. So that's the kind of math uh, that's necessary to get the velocity where we want it. Um, so you know what? We have a linear 
speed and acceleration being applied here. So you know what, we could actually try it out. I think I think it might actually just work uh, from where we are here. And um, the angular probably won't change. And as you see, I did zoom it out a little bit just so we can see different speeds and whatnot. I'm gonna move and yep, we have our first box 2 d steering entity. So perfect, we uh, have a little bit going on here and um, I think next thing we need to do is get our angular acceleration in and we should be good to go. And so uh, if to get that going, uh, we need if steer output dot angular and to, to understand this, uh, steer output dot linear and angular uh, those are just two separate parts of this, um, where is it, steering acceleration object. It's so you can differentiate between the linear and ang angular types of speeds. So you can, it calculates both the linear and angular separately into two vectors. And so you can get the uh, steer output dot angular uh, does not equal zero. And this is just a single value because it's not working um, with a vector, I believe it's just working with a single degree parameter um, based on how much it should rotate and whatnot. Uh, all you have to do is, uh, because it did find the angular value, uh, we're saying if this isn't zero, so if there is angular speed to be applied or angular acceleration to be applied, we just have body.apply torque steer output dot angular times delta again because we do want to scale by our frames per second so everything's nice and smooth and then if any accelerations uh, that should equal true because we have applied an angular acceleration and so now we need to come back in here and uh, have a any accelerations catch for our angular speed so if body dot get angular velocity is greater than max angular speed, then body dot set angular velocity to max angular speed, and uh, that one's a lot more straightforward in as far as uh, angular capping and uh, linear capping. Uh, this one's a lot easier to implement compared to the linear acceleration because we're not working with a vector um, that has the x and y parts to it. So uh, there was this other part to the angular orientation and whatnot, and I think it was mostly for idling uh, angular rotation, but for some reason I don't think it's working right, so I'm not going to show you guys that just, just yet. Um, but for the most part, with the steering output uh, angular, uh, included now. If we run it, we should be able to see our box 2 d body moving and rotating and um, okay, well it's actually not wanting to rotate at all. <laughs> um, so maybe we messed something up real quick. Let's let's double check. So if steering output angular does not equal zero, body dot apply torque steer output times delta um, Accelerations is true. So far, everything looks good. Um, you know what? Let's let's actually try what that other method was. So vector two, linear velocity equals get linear velocity if not. Vector to angle in vel. Okay, sorry about this, guys. Uh, this was actually kind of unexpected because I was messing with this earlier and it was seemingly working just fine. Um, I don't really want to redo this video as it's kind of lengthy, uh, but new orientation. 
Okay, so we're just going to check this out real quick. Let's see if that gives us the expected values that we want. Huh, okay, well, I really don't see why that's applying the steering, the angular steering, but okay, uh, we can just look at that real quick. Um, what we're doing is getting the linear velocity and making sure the linear velocity isn't zero. So while it while the entity is moving, um, it calculates the based on the speed and direction of the angle. Oh, you know what? Actually, this does make sense. So I think the way Box2D is working is because like it it, it can't calculate the angular um, turning. Oh no 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 wait. Angular does not equal zero, so I think that might be speed. Oh, so this is only when it's moving and uh, it, it turns it at a certain speed, I think. And then this is when it's when it uh, isn't moving. It's not, it's the linear velocity is not zero. Oh, so if it's moving, then it just sets the angular orientation to how it's moving. That's interesting. Okay. Well, this is just what it had in the docs, um, but kind of mess around with this. This, I guess I misinterpreted this, and apologies for that. I, I thought I understood what was going on here, because I this was working before um, without all this stuff in here. So uh, with that, if you include this last part, it should get the angular uh, speed in there for you on your entity. So. You can kind of see how when I'm next to it though, this is the part I was saying was kind of buggy and I didn't really quite understand all the way yet. But you'll notice it doesn't change the angle when he's right next to him, but if you like touch him, it does. And there's just some weird things that kind of happen. So um, with that though, even without this, uh, you learned how to get some linear motion with your Boxer D body and whatnot. And I think I'm just gonna save uh, talking about this arrival vector uh, for the next video. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Apologies at the end there for the kind of hiccup we had. Um, but hey, at least we got to a reasonable goal having an entity that follows us now and kind of understanding more about how simple it is to really just get these GDX AI steering behavior implementations in. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too daunting with that vector math. It, it, again, it's very straightforward math. Uh, if you just look it up a little bit as just learning about how to get the magnitude of that uh, linear velocity and being able to cap it. So again, uh, hope you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe as usual, and I'll see you guys in the next one uh, where we're going to begin talking about uh, specific behaviors rather than a rival and other ones you can just kind of plug and play and uh, again, facing uh, A, B, proximity, radius proximity, facing behaviors and whatnot. So. Uh, see you guys next time.